Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is TXV Diagnosis, okay? So, uh, presently we have a full system, usually this outdoor condenser that's outside, all right? Obviously, these two are mounted inside the building presently. This is a training assembly, so it's acting like a huge dehumidifier presently, all right? Uh, we see that we have an external equalization port right here, and the TXV bulb is here, okay? And you see that we have it covered with insulation on the suction line coming out of the evaporator coil, which is in here. All right, so uh, we have a pressure of, this is R22, okay? And the subcooling on the side of this outdoor unit says 15 degrees of subcooling, okay? That's what it's calling for. It's target superheat. So if you were to look at this red gauge for subcooling because it has a TXV, you're looking at about 99 degrees, okay? 99 minus 81.3, it's a little overcharged right now, all right? So what's that, about uh, 18 degrees, somewhere between 17 and 18 degrees, okay? Just because you see it's 81.3, all right? So it's a little overcharged presently. Um, that charge is still okay as long as it's within 3 degrees plus or minus what the actual is calling for. It's calling for 15, and it's actually 18 uh, that is that is press that is okay. All right. So uh, what we're going to do now is now that you see this vapor side. That's what I want you to take a peek at here. Presently, we have uh, the saturation point in the evaporator coil is presently about 33 degrees on the evaporator on the suction side. 33 degrees in the middle of this evaporator coil because we know that we can convert the pressure, which is actually at 59 psig, over to about 33 degrees saturated state, okay, in the middle of the evaporator coil where liquid and vapor both exist at. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take the TXV bulb out, and we're going to take a look at a couple conditions here, all right? There we go. This TXV is held on uh, with uh, stainless steel hose clamps. Okay. If you do use stainless steel hose clamps, you want to make sure that you do not tighten down too hard. The reason the manufacturer does not give you stainless steel hose clamps is just they're afraid of people tightening them down too hard. Okay, And then what can happen is the thermostatic bulb gets crushed. Okay, uh, So that's why they end up giving you everybody copper straps. Okay, the first condition, we have 95 degree water right here, okay? And we're going to go ahead and put the bulb into the 95 degree water. When we put this into the 95 degree water, what should happen is our superheat uh, is going to change, okay? Uh, our pressure on the vapor side is going to rise, okay? So we actually have this on the subcooling side, we're going to change that to the superheat side. All right. What you're noticing right now is you're noticing it went up from 33 degrees on the saturated side all the way up. Right now it's at 40 degrees saturated in the middle of the evaporator coil. When you take a TXV bowl and you uh, apply heat to it, basically by putting it into hot water, What's going to happen is it's going to heat the refrigerant up that's with inside, inside of the bulb, all right? And it's going to apply more pressure to the head of the TXV, which is actually inside the cover here, all right? Uh, when it does that, it actually opens the liquid up as, as basically as high as it can or as open as it can. It allows as much liquid as it possibly can into the evaporator coil when it sees that this line is hot, okay? That means you need more cooling, right? That's what the TXV thinks. It thinks this line is really, really hot, which means that the inside of the building is hot and it needs to send more refrigerant into the evaporator coil in order to absorb that heat to move it to a place that it can reject it at, which is the condenser. So presently, what we have here is we have 41 to maybe 42 degrees of saturated in the middle of this evaporator coil, it's 42 to 43, and it's only superheating it up about two degrees, okay? because it's opening full force, all right? Opens full force, it's putting a lot of liquid in, 
all right? So the saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist has increased, all right? And it cannot absorb enough temperature in the coil to create a 14 degree superheat, which is what it normally wants to try to do, all right? So in this case, we see that the TXV is functioning the way it should, because if we put this in hot water and we do not see anything happen, that would be a problem, okay? If we put it in hot water and we saw that nothing changed, then that means that you've lost refrigerant on the bowl, okay? Meaning there is no refrigerant inside the bowl. The refrigerant comes with the TXV, all right? It comes in it. It's separate from your normal refrigerant charge, all right? So we're going to put this back on and we're going to see what the superheat was before. Make sure your bulb has good surface contact and it's not over any brazes or anything like that. All right. As it senses the temperature on that suction line, this pressure should go down. Okay. The pressure and temperature should go down. All right. So it was at 42 degrees. You now see it's at 39, 38. Okay. It continues to fall. All right. 37. So it's going to go back to where it should be which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 degrees of superheat, at least where it comes out at the evaporator coil right here. By the time it gets to the condensing unit, which is located over here, uh, it could have either picked up superheat or rejected superheat with the line set, with the copper lines. So what you're reading over here is the total superheat, and what the TXV is trying to read over here is the actual superheat. All right, so our superheat is now increasing. All right, so we have roughly 38, 37 or 38 degrees, okay, in the middle of the evaporator coil. And our actual temperature on the suction line right here is presently 47. So it's opening up the gap, all right? And that's, that's what it should be doing, okay? Our vapor pressure for a correct charge should be above 32 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil, all right? So it's, it's opening it up, and this should end up being somewhere around 12 to 16 degrees, somewhere around in there, somewhere in the neighborhood of that uh, 14 degrees of superheat that the TXV is trying to get. All right. So uh, that's how you test the TXV bowl. All right. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.